let, let us pray. Our most full Heavenly Father, thank you that you have added another day onto our lives. And we are here to listen to your word. Please uh, enlighten us by your words so that you may understand uh, the meaning of the churches and uh, uh, help us to uh, apply these lessons into our lives so they may have a, a meaningful and a fruitful lives in your grace. Please uh, be with us as we have time. I commit the rest of time onto your mighty care. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. It. Amen. Okay, so uh, at first we will open the uh, text. Let's turn to the John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Okay, if we find out, let me read. I'm, I'm the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branch. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch uh, and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Verse 9, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you, abide in my love. If you keep my commandment, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. 11. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Up to that. So I'm so glad to, to have such an opportunity to have this Christian Life, uh, life uh, seminar in this time through we. Uh, Though, though we have been facing hard time of the pandemic called COVID-19, so it's, it's been almost two years uh, since it uh, broke out, isn't it? But uh, uh, still, though we are uh, going on, and this Christian life uh, helped by the God's grace, and uh, uh, we need to have the more uh, meaningful and fruitful lives, isn't it? That's how we have this uh, Christian uh, life seminar. Uh, this time, main topic is the church. Church. So, main verse uh, was taken from Ephesians chapter one, verses twenty-two and twenty-three. The church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fears and all in all. And then, um, you know, church is uh, very important. This is very important topic for every Christian. Uh, just like the gospel is uh, essential for man to be safe, uh, so the church is uh, uh, for the uh, saved, for the saint, it's essential uh, to grow, isn't it? You know, to be born again, gospel is necessary. And the, for the growth, this, uh, you know, this church life is very necessary, isn't it? That's why Jesus also said, Jesus Christ our Lord said, and uh, John chapter uh, 10, verse 10, the thief. Uh, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that uh, they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus uh, really very much, uh, the Lord is very much concerned about uh, our lives, especially for the, for the abundant life, is it? 
And most of you, you, you have the life. And uh, since you understood the gospel, you got saved. After that, also we need to focus on uh, how to have a uh, abundant life. How to make it abundant, isn't it? You know, the, the, regarding that matter, uh, these two know the church and apply the, this lesson into our lives. It's very important. So, uh, church is uh, really one of the great mystery. There's a, a, a patient chapter 5, 32. It is said, this is great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. As you know, uh, this, uh, uh, there are some um, parables, like uh, types of the church in the Bible. Uh, church is likened to the body, body of Christ. Individually, we are the members of the body. And also church is like a tree, especially vine tree. And uh, we are like a branches. And also the, it is said that you are the uh, soldier of the Christ, good soldier of the Christ, which means church is like, like the army. Eh? Isn't it? And then the, like that, though we have the, some parables about the church in the Bible. And so the main topic is the church, but subtopic, uh, we are going to study about these four topics. Uh, today, number one subtopic, title is the vine and the branches, eh? uh, shared by me. And uh, uh, next uh, one, the subtopic number two, is the body of the Christ and the members of it. It's another part that we'll share. And the number three, the army of Christ. And number four, holy temple of the God being built. So we are going to cover these four subtopics under this main topic, the church. I hope in prayer time, you may be blessed by his word. And then today, let's go to the main text. Already we have read John 15, verses 1 through 11. It's about the vine and the branches. And it's, uh, here we can see very clear relationship in the vine and the branches. How the branch can bear fruit. Number one, it should be connected to the vine tree, isn't it? And so that's how we can get very important lesson regarding the relationship that uh, uh, Christ and the uh, saint. And I mean the, the church is the body of Christ and uh, we are the members of the body. Also, you know, the another parable like this, the, the vine and the branches okay especially uh, main uh, verse is this uh, John 15 verse 5 okay we bear over it together 5 I am the vine and you are the branches he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing yes it's very clear without me what can you do <laughs> without me you can do nothing yeah regarding that uh, growth uh, of the spirituality and uh, bearing spiritual fruit, nothing, nothing you can do without me. Until unless you are connected to the Christ, especially the body of Christ, the branch can bear any, cannot bear any fruit, isn't it? So uh, you better imagine, I think uh, not many of you are from the countryside, I thought you already get adjusted to the city lives, am I right? <laughs> and then hardly you can see this uh, vine. I mean the grapes, isn't it? It's three of the grapes. Eh? But you better, that's why I prepared this uh, photo. Eh? <laughs> see, now this, uh, we can see that uh, fruitful, this vine tree. But people, they are uh, usually uh, focusing on the only fruits, but they don't know how to produce fruits, isn't it? You know, how the branch can produce fruit? Already I told you, it must be connected, isn't it? To the body, which means the vine tree. And then the, when it gets get, uh, provided, I mean that uh, with the nutrition from the root and uh, from every, you know, the joint and, uh, in the, you know, as for the body, joint and the ligament, uh, as for the tree, like branches connected together and getting the nutrition. But this is the way how to grow. Am I right? And also how to bear fruit. So I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him bear much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. This is the main verse of the, uh, today's uh, topic. The vine and the branches, okay? And at, uh, in the beginning, we better uh, uh, make sure about the meaning, meaning of the church. What does it mean, church? Greek word is uh, ecclesia. Uh, ecclesia means, you know, the, those are sanctified, those are called out, huh? the sanctified group. 
Okay, it's very clear. First uh, Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2. Let's read together. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Yes, it's an epistle written to the church, especially at Corinth. Uh, which is church? What is church? Those who are sanctified in Christ, called to be saints. This is position sanctification. You know, the, uh, before salvation, we used to be a sinner. You know, the doomed to be judged. Or what about after salvation? We have been sanctified. Position sanctification into the Son of God, ch children of God. Isn't it? And the inheritance of the eternal kingdom of God. So I mean, the, the who, what is the church? Church means those who, this is people, those are saved in Christ. It's a holy congregation, isn't it? So, the, that's why already I told you, Greek word ecclesia, those are called out from where? From the darkness. He has conveyed us from the darkness into the light. That's why this Colossians chapter 1, 13 and 14. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. How, how come it happened? Because Jesus has redeemed us with His own blood eternally, once for all. This is not with the blood of calves and goats, but with his own blood, he entered into the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. It's written in Hebrew 9, 12. That is the reason how we uh, could be, could have been, you know, uh, conveyed from the darkness into the kingdom of the uh, Son of his love. Which means we are a uh, church, those are born again, because uh, he has delivered us from the darkness into the light. Almost similar uh, that the verse, uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it is about the identity of the Christian, those are born again. Our position is changed, it has been changed from the sinner to the righteous, from the not the people to the people. Am I right? Yes, uh, this uh, uh, 1 Peter two, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Yes, people we were not people. Especially all we were Gentiles. Uh, any, anybody? Yeah? Like a, one of Jews? <laughs> Sorry. Either Jews or not. The, everyone, anyone who is not born again, uh, not the people of God, isn't it? But what about now? Either Jews or the uh, Greek or Gentiles, uh, anyone who is born again, yeah? uh, became child of God, people of God. So the purpose, why God has changed that position? Why? Why he has delivered us. Purpose, so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes, he has called us out of darkness. We are uh, those who are called out. That is the meaning of the church. Okay? So, uh, also why he has a chorus. That is for the fellowship. That's why already I told you, First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2. A church, those who are sanctified in Christ. God has called them out of darkness to the fellowship. That's why this 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 9, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, He has called us out of darkness into where? Do you see? Into, into the fellowship. And fellowship, sharing with those who are those who have same faith. That's why fellowship is possible. Uh, we are able to have fellowship with the church. Because church, those who are saved in Christ. That's why the, it's a very much a, a, a related. You know, the, uh, to know the church uh, is related to know the fellowship. It's a very uh, a relative to each other. Okay? And so, uh, they say the many uh, uh, apostles, disciples, they, they, uh, they want us to know the meaning of the fellowship. Because this is one of the ways how we can make our Christian life more abundant, isn't it? Having more joy, fruitful life, joyful life, isn't it? They say this uh, uh, John the Apostle also, he has uh, written in this uh, first John chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Okay, we better read together. The which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have the fellowship 
with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Yes, one of the purposes why the, this epistle was written by the John. So the church may have joyful life. Already I told you, yeah, God all the time, the, uh, even our Lord Jesus Christ is uh, concerned about our spiritual well-being. Okay, you get the life? That's all? No. God wants us to have more abundant life. You know, think about the parent, uh, uh, since they have the uh, begotten, I mean, the gave birth to the babies. What do they want the baby to be? To be well, am I right? <laughs> to be growing well, am I right? This I mean, uh, likewise, God also, the, uh, He all the time is concerned about our spiritual well-being. The, since we got saved by the gospel, after that, uh, He wants us to grow well. And that's why the, we need to know this meaning of church. And uh, Christian life, I should say, Christian life is very essential with the church. Christian life is church life. Without knowing church, you cannot have the proper Christian life. It's very difficult to grow, almost impossible. To, say, to know the church is very essential for the maturity, for the growth of every Christian, isn't it? So, that's why it is also said like that, why this epistle was written? So that you also may have the fellowship with us. Do you see this on the right? So that you may have fellowship with us. Who is you? The receiver, the recipient of this epistle. They are saved. Who is we? You know, disciple, apostles, isn't it? You know, the, who, who can have the fellowship? Those who have the same faith. I told you already, isn't it? And then, in this way, in the fellowship, we can make our joy full. There's a verse 4. These things we write to you that your joy may be full. Isn't it? Full. Full. Joyful life. Whenever I see this full, you know, the, there is a good full is there, bad full is there, isn't it? What is good full? Thankful, joyful, isn't it? Beautiful. <laughs> But the bad fruits there, we, we better not have the. Eh? But uh, any, the, why not? The, we better have the joyful life. Hmm? The joy of salvation, He has given us. That's the first, I think, first Peter chapter 1, 8 and 9. The, even though you don't see the Jesus Christ, you, you have the very much eh? gladness, joy, because you got saved, isn't it? But after that, uh, He wants us, the Lord wants us to have the joyful life. One of the way to buy, having, Proper fellowship, proper church lives, isn't it? So, the mystery of God's plan of the church. Already I told you, this is a great mystery. Eh? The, uh, I'm saying concerning Christ and the church. Already the Apostle uh, Paul, uh, he said in the book of Ephesians, isn't it? And the word of God's plan also, mystery. You know, what does it mean, mystery? Mystery is uh, something, is unknown. It's uh, until unless it is uh, revealed by those who understood. Am I right? There is a mystery. The, when it is revealed by those who understood, eh? and uh, other people also uh, will be able to know, isn't it? That is a mystery. And gospel is a mystery. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Yes. This is the reason why we have to preach the gospel. Let them know. Without preach, how they can hear. Without hearing, how they can believe. What is beautiful? Before I told you, beautiful. Huh? Whose feet? Those whose feet climbing over the mountain with the good tidings. Their feet are beautiful. It's written in Romans chapter 10, isn't it? What I mean? Without hearing, how they can believe. This is a mystery. They say the gospel should be preached by those who understood. What about church or great mystery? Ephesians 5, 31, 32. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Yes. Of course, in, you know, the first uh, apostle is saying about uh, the relationship and uh, something like... Uh, 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 how to, uh, uh, how to, how to, uh, uh, how to say, hmm? respect each other, isn't it? The, the, the relationship between the husband and wife. But uh, all the more important meaning, spiritual meaning, is about the Christ and church. 
This is great mystery. By the Lord, by the Savior, we are saved. And what about? This church is the body of Christ. We are growing in the church. This is a very great mystery. Mystery means we should learn. Isn't it? Now I'm trying to do my rebel best so that you may understand the meaning of a church, so that you may have the joyful and fruitful lives. Okay? And then, the church is also like the bosom of the mother to the babies. Okay, baby is born. After that, baby, what they should desire? Tobacco wine? What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> baby should desire, desire the pure milk of the huh? what? The, I mean the spiritual reward. But this pure milk from the mother, isn't it? It's written First Peter, I think, chapter 2, verse 2. Let's read together. As newborn babies desire the pure milk of the world, that you may grow thereby. Yes, the chapter 1 is especially about the gospel, how to be born again. And chapter 1, I mean the, this first Peter, chapter 1, verse 23, having been born again, not through the corruptible seed, but through the incorruptible seed, which is the world, which lives and abides forever. Yes, this is the word, the gospel, which we have preached to you. Yes, by that pure gospel, we are saved. The biblical gospel. I should say biblical gospel. Not man-made gospel, but biblical gospel. We have heard and we are saved by that gospel. Isn't it? Born again. After that, after born again, this chapter 2 is about how to grow, how to grow. Yes, we, we are made a newborn baby. I mean, the, the moment the, when we are saved, we are made a newborn baby. After that, you must concern about growing, growing. Just like the uh, parent, I mean the God the Father also, he's concerned about growing. Why not? Baby, children, you also you should concern about your spiritual well-being growing. Am I right? And then now the first Peter chapter 2 verse 2, as a newborn baby, desire the pure milk of the world. You know, all the time the desire is very important. How to be, be filled with good things it starts from the desire. No matter how good things are ready for you, but until unless you desire, never it can be good to you. Am I right? Desire. Open your mouth and I'll, I'll fill you with the goodness. There's a desire is very important, you know? So, you know, this I, I should say to all of you, Christian, if you are really born again, you must desire to grow well with the church. Church is a body of Christ. We are members of it. Church is a, a tree. Stem of the tree, branch, I mean, sorry, sorry, so it's a, a vine tree, and the we are branches. So, uh, there's uh, this all sub topic, uh, topics of the church are related to each other, I believe, one another, okay? And then, First Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, this is also about the church, what is the church? Okay, this underlying part, it is say, the church of living God, the pillar and Ground of the truth. Yeah, church of living God is the pillar and ground of truth. Which means this is the place where the truth is preached. You know, think about without church, how you could hear the message of God. And how you could be saved without church. We have church. And then one of the church members, I mean, the one again, the brother, sister, they, they have delivered this message to us, isn't it? Also, the otherwise, or you may... Uh, you might attend this uh, Bible seminar conducted by a church. Am I right? Yes, I mean, so this church is the place where the, this truth is preached. It is called the pillar and the ground of truth. Hmm? See, where God is uh, uh, providing the spiritual food to us, this is church. You know, in the beginning, also He has saved us by the truth. After that, how He uh, brings us up. There was a by the truth preached by the church. There's a James chapter 1, 18. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. Yes, we are born again by the word of truth. After that, we are growing by the word of truth. And church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. So, you know, every born again Christian should abide in the church properly for the well growing. Isn't it? So, um, Let's come back to the main text, this uh, relationship, vine and the branches, especially John 15, verse 3 and 4. 
Let's read together. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Yes. See, think about it. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. What about you? Are you clean? Are you washed? By what? By your good deeds? What can wash? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, blood of Jesus. Already I told you. He has borne all of our sins. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away sin of the world. Eh? John 1, 9, eh? 29. And he died on the cross, said, It is finished. What did he finish? He finished washing away huh? all of our sins, redeeming us. So with his own blood, he has obtained eternal redemption. Already I told you. We are washed. It. it is said to the disciple, including future disciples, huh? who are saved, isn't it? And after the verse 4, abide in me, and I in you. Okay, this is commandment of the Lord. Since you got saved, what you should do? What you should do, there is abide in me, and I in you, and you will have the fruitful lives. What is the first step? to have the fruitful lives. Tell me, what is the first step? Abide in me. And how, how could we abide in Jesus? He's invisible one. Where is, where is he? <laughs> eh? Already I told you, Ephesians chapter 1, 22-23. Church is the, his body. He is the head of the church. We are the members of the body. When we connect it, abide properly with the church, and uh, we can abide in him, isn't it? So, already I told you, this is a commandment of the, what is a commandment of the God to the unsaved, to the lost, be saved. There is a commandment, commandment of the Lord. And what about to the saved, abide in me. It's like the, uh, those who do not try, abide in him, abide in the body of the Christ. It, it's like a disobedience, isn't it? Any. So, these are the regarding commandment, let me tell you, the, it's like a, to everyone who is not saved, born again. John 3, 3, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And John 3, 7, you must be born again. This is a, uh, declared by the Jesus Christ, our Lord. What is a Christianity? Christianity, we follow the saying of the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? No matter what the theologian said, if they are saying against what the Lord said, we cannot follow. Am I right? What is the first step? I mean, the, uh, the first obedience to the commandment of the Lord. That is to be born again. Isn't it? You must be born again. After that, see? After that, yeah, to the saved. This is also commandment of the Lord. Eh? As the Father loved me, and I also have loved you, abide in my love. Okay, now I'm saying to you, what, uh, uh, what does it mean, abide in me? There is a abide in my love. Okay, think about how, how we can abide in his love. If you didn't get saved, you, you never be able to uh, abide in his love. He also said, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Do you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ have loved you? Yes. You know, even the uh, first, John uh, first John chapter 4, 16, it is said, We have known and believed the love that God has for us. You know, believing, what is believing? Without knowing, I can believe? It doesn't make sense. Sometimes some people may say, ah, even though I don't know what is gospel, but anyway, anyway eh? now I believe gospel. <laughs> Does it make sense? <laughs> Without knowing how the Lord Jesus Christ loved me, how you can believe? Impossible. How you can be saved? Impossible. You understand? He said, now the Lord said, As I loved you, you abide in my love. And it is said to, you know, those who understand the love of Christ, especially that the saving love, isn't it? And after that, what we should do? We should abide in him. We should abide in his love. You know, think about how can. Their love, what is the new commandment from the Lord Jesus Christ? John 3. John 13, 34, as I have, uh, have loved you, you also love one another. Am I right? With the brethren, it is possible. they loving one another, loving each other. With the brethren, that is possible. Is it? As I already told you, what is church? Church, those who are saved. This Christian life is church life. Yeah? 
uh, abide in him, abide in his body, abide in my, his, his love, it, uh, they uh, relate to one another, isn't it? So, uh, this new commandment. And then, also, the, uh, this Ephesians chapter 5, 2 also, walk in love as Christ also have loved us and given himself for us. Yes. You know, we come to know Christ has loved us and he has given himself for our salvation. That's why we call, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, isn't it? And after that, what kind of the lives should we live? There is a walk in love, walk in love, loving one another with the, with the love of Christ. That is Christian life, isn't it? That's why I mean, the, to the conclusion, Christian life is a life of love. Inwardly, we love one another in the church. Outwardly, we love the lost by preaching the gospel. This is a life of love. That is a Christian life. But anyway, now the, regarding this new commandment, as I loved you, already I told you, this is John 13, 34, as I loved you, that you also love one another. It's possible in the church. I mean, especially this uh, uh, the brethren love. It's possible with the church. So, already I told you, Jesus, now he's invisible, isn't it? Now the Holy Spirit is with us, and what about what does it mean? Abide in Him, abide in His uh, uh, body. As I Ephesians chapter one twenty two, already I told you, church which is His body. And uh, what about First Corinthians chapter twelve twenty seven? You are the body of Christ and members individually. Yes, members individually. Yes, you think about how many members. I mean the in the body. Okay. Some are like uh, eyes, nose, and mouth, and fingers, toes, and teeth. <laughs> so many members. But every member is important to the body, isn't it? Uh, the, as it uh, walks, it's shared. And uh, each one of us, eh? we are connected together and knit together. We are growing together. Am I right? This is how church is growing. Okay? So this is also important. Individually, you are the uh, members of the body. As I think about this relationship, now I, mainly I told you these uh, two things about the tree, vine tree and the branch. And then the other, the body and the members of it. You know, it's not, not difficult for us to uh, get to the point, the importance of the relationship, how to produce the fruit. Think about tree and the branch. You are the branch. The branch, do you want? To bear fruit <laughs> and what you should do first step you should be connected to the tree am i right well i think about the, these members eh? the, do you want to do your part i mean the uh, your share like in a, what, what is the role of the this uh, um, finger eh? now hand i want to drink water now i'm thirsty at, at first this i should search where is a where is where is where is it? <laughs> After that, now the, the order is given to the hand. You go and take it, isn't it? Like this, you go and take it eh? and drink. Sorry, <laughs> now, now I'm okay. I mean, this is role of the finger and hand. I mean, in order to do your role, what about? This finger and hand should be connected to the body, isn't it? They say this is not difficult for us to understand what's the relationship tree and the branch, and the body and the member's body. So, and the how to grow, already I told you, somehow this is a summary, how to grow, be connected and provide with the nutrition. Yeah, branch, you are the branches. You, you want to grow, you want to bear fruit. And you need to connect it to the tree, and the, what the tree will do? Sucking, getting the nutrition, you know, from the root and the from, even from leaves, am I right? What are the photosynthesis? You, you know, isn't it? <laughs> and then what about the branch getting the nutrition and the, it uh, is able to produce fruit, is it? But many people, even though they, they uh, focus on the bearing fruits, like a 30 fruits, 60 fruits, and 100 fruits, but first step, they are neglected with the first step. What is the first? To be connected. Am I right? Whether in these difficult times, whether pandemic or not, <laughs> whatever comes to us, the saint should be connected to the church, whether online or offline. Is it right? It's a very important lesson, actually, because 
You are branches. We are branches. Jesus said, I'm the vine tree. You are the branches. Abide in me and I in you. Huh? Until unless you abide in me, you can do nothing. Yeah? It's an important lesson, is it? So, this is a way how to grow and bear fruit. Colossians 2.19, okay, it's an important verse. 2.19, let's read here. And not holding fast to the head from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joint and ligaments, grow with the increase that is from God. Yes, it's, it's important. The grow with the increase, that is from God. You know, it's not like that uh, you are trying to grow by yourself, but sometimes difficult. <laughs> the growth uh, is from the God. That is from the God. When you do your part properly, according to the word, with obedience, and God will make you grow. Am I right? And what is the way of the growing? Head. Head is Jesus Christ. We are the body, members of the body. And from the head, all the body, nourished and knit together. You think about why, why the Jesus Christ, he takes care of the body. Because his head. Body is his own body. Church is his body. That's why he do mind, he cares. Am I right? Cares of his body. When we, we are connected to the church, we get nutrition, we can grow. That growth from the God. Okay? So, this is a principle. Principles, the, 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 when we think about this relationship, the tree and the branches, and the body and the members, this is principle. Without being connected, no provision, no fruit. You want to have the fruitful life? And being connected. Please be connected. Am I right? Yeah, to the tree. So, I'm the by, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Yeah, again, again, I'm saying, because this, this is a, a very uh, simple but strong, powerful verse regarding how to grow, how to bear fruit. Please remember, even though you may forget all of the, what I say to you, but don't forget what Jesus said to you. Am I right? <laughs> I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him bears much fruit. Bears much fruit when you abide in Him. Okay? So, why to abide in Him? This is also important. And the why, why? The reason, why to abide in Him? And one of the reasons, and your prayer will be answered. This is one of the, you know, the, the, the verses uh, in the text, according to context, John 15, 7 and 7, okay, only 7, let's read together. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. You know, sometimes uh, why you feel difficult to get the answer of the prayer? Because you don't follow this first step. What is the precondition in order to get the prayer answers? If you abide in me, abide in me, abide in his body, abide in the Pharaoh, and my words abide in you. As you abide, as you have the Pharaoh with the church, you learn more and more like this, by listening his word, by reading his word, all such a thing, you know, what church is doing? Teach you. Teach us with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. That is what church now does. Isn't it? So, so the, one of the reasons why to abide in Him in order to get the, uh, the answer of the prayer. Also, why to abide in Him? In him very uh, easy to understand. Already at church, to bear much fruit. Branch, why? Abide in the uh, tree. In order to bear fruit. And then, why to bear much fruit? Okay, sorry to say, it's, it's like some logic, <laughs> okay? <laughs> the, in, uh, in order to bear fruit, we abide in Him, is it? And the why to bear much fruit? And when we bear much fruit, our Father, Heavenly Father will be glorified. And you, you will be His disciples, okay? This is also one of the verses in the text, verse 8, John 17, verse 8. On the right path. Let's read together. By this my Father is glorified, then you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Hmm? You know, someone, even though he tried to be his disciples, he's not ready, eh? not qualified to be his disciples. Why? Disobedience. Because he doesn't follow this first step. Eh? I mean, the front line of the steps. 
you know, someone who is not uh, faithful in, in the little things and how he can be faithful in the greater things, much things, is it? You know, all the time when we focus on the obedience, we should start from the small things, beginning things, I mean the little things, first steps, am I right? Without reading the Bible, all the time you set it aside and you never read the Bible. Just once in a week, just come to church and listen. That's all about your Christian life. <laughs> Even the life of the world? No, no, no. I mean, the, like this, the obedience should start, should begin from little things. I mean, the, and the how to be his disciple, already I told you. First step, you abide in his body. And uh, getting the nutrition, bearing the fruits. When you bear much fruit, Father will be glorified. You will be my disciples. That is what Jesus Christ said. And why to abide in Him? Another reason. In order to enjoy the fullness of the love and joy in our Christian life. Already I told you. God uh, uh, wants us to have the abundant life since we have the life. And joyful life. There on. It's written, John 15, 11 and 12. Let's read together. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Yes, now here we can see what? The two important words, joy and love, is it? It's related to each other. We have to receive his love. We come to know on the cross of the Calvary, isn't it? After that, this love also can be more abundant. What about joy also? We can have the more joy. How? In this way. Eh? Abide in me and I in you. And uh, you love one another. And uh, my joy eh, remain in you, that your joy may be full. So why to abide in him? In order to have joyful life. Loving one another, isn't it? So, and uh, in which to love and to be loved one another. Already I told you, this is not one way love, something like uh, in, a, in a both way. Means uh, we love huh? brethren, also we can be loved uh, by the brethren, is it? It can be happening in the church, is it? So, uh, also in this way, as we love one another, we come to know the, uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Jesus Christ, uh, in the deeper way, I mean the uh, depth and the width and the, you know, the height of the love. There is uh, more than knowledge, and we come to know more and more, isn't it? As we love one another in the church. It's written, Ephesians chapter 3, 18 and 19. Let's read together may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the uh, width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Yes. The, you know, somebody said, you know, I know him, I know Christ. How much do you know him? I should say, I know not much. More about Jesus should I know. That is my wish. That is my desire. Right? And we come to know him more and more. That uh, we come to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. We did a saint. Do you see this? We did a saint. We are able to comprehend with all the saints. That's why Christian life is church life. Maybe you may meet uh, someone, the, how to say, whose characteristic is not, uh, does not fit me anyhow, somehow, sometimes offended. But is it the reason we should go out of church? You think about the, the time of the Noah's flood. Only two places, either in the ark or out of the ark. Where do you want to be? <laughs> we should be in the ark. Maybe the animals made, sorry, plan P and uh, what should we do? That's the reason. Should we go out of the ark? We need to do cleaning work together, isn't it? Mopping, sweeping. Yeah? That's why also we can learn about long suffering. This is one of the uh, fruits of the Holy Spirit. Even because of the Lord, long suffering, we could be saved. You know, the, without any reason why to... Uh, why to be patient? You know, how, how can you learn about the patience? Isn't it? That's why I am. 
See, you know, the, even though we may miss such people, but still we should do, uh, remain in the church, try to love one another. With the love, not with my own love, but with the love of Christ. There, there is also one of the reasons why we all the time the, used to listen to the sermon message of the love of Christ, you know, to remind how much he loved me, how much he had a long suffering. I used to be against him. Who could be saved by, by these? But all we are saved by grace, eh? by his love, isn't it? And the, we should know about his love more and more as we are abiding eh? in the church, uh, getting along with the brethren, isn't it? This is uh, that the knowledge. We know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. I mean, which passes knowledge. In this way, we are learning his love one by one, isn't it? So, also, one of the reasons, so that we may experience power of the Holy Spirit. Where is the power, walking power of the Holy Spirit? It is in the church. Now, the following verse, Ephesians chapter 3, 20 and 21. Let's read together. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Yes. Now there is walking power in us. Where, where is it? In us. It's, a, it's a not singular type, but plural type. If we all love, it's very difficult to have the such power, isn't it? You know, because church has the power, now we are going with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why the God added more people who are saved daily, isn't it? Day by day. It's happening in our church now. You know, even though we are facing this now, what about this uh, you know, epidemic disease? But uh, uh, even these days, also the many people say they are saved huh? the, by the listening, the online sermon, online uh, Bible seminar, isn't it? This is one of the evidence the Holy Spirit is uh, with our churches, isn't it? This, I mean, now there is a walking power in us that in us there is a prototype, there is a in the church. This is one of the reasons why we should abide in the church, in order to experience walking power of Holy Spirit. Also, the branches withered, thrown into fire. You know, the, we could see now the, the this verse 6, some branches became withered. What's the reason? Because it does not abide, does not uh, connect itself with the main tree. And what will happen to such branches? They will be withered, cast out, thrown into the fire. Does it mean he's going to hell for you? No, no, no. Many people have misunderstood. Okay, now I'm clarifying about this matter. It does not mean about the hell fire, but there is a fire of the chastisement. Do you see? John 15, 6. Let's read together. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Yet, yeah. who gathered this branch withered? They. This is man. There's a King James Version. Man gathered them. Is it man? Is it man who make people go to hellfire? No. Only it is God. Am I right? This is what does it mean? The man gathered these branches with earth and uh, throw into the fire. This is like a shameful life. Though, even though some Christian, they are saved, but they are not connected to the church. And what about? Difficult to have fruitful lives. You know, it is related to the like uh, you know the judgment seat of Christ for the reward. Especially, it's written First Corinthians chapter three, Second Corinthians chapter five, isn't it? So this is not hellfire. Uh, please uh, uh, be careful of the interpretation of this Bible. This is not hellfire, but fire of the chastisement. Okay. That's why I need to show you this First Corinthians chapter three, eleven and thirteen. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now here we can see there are two kinds of houses. You know, they are building houses. But foundation same. There is a Jesus Christ. Which means this house A also saved. House B also saved Christian. 
But the how to live after service, it's a different. Now the verse 12. Now if anyone views on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw. See, do you see now the two groups are there? One group, uh, materials of building, gold, silver, precious stone. Which means they are living on behalf of the gospel, on behalf of the kingdoms of God. Eh? The, uh, in the rest of the uh, lives. But the other, what about this uh, wood, hay, and straw? Inflammable. Burn out. Nothing remains on the foundation. And uh, they will have the shameful salvation. Shameful means no glory, no reward when Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Why? Reward according to their work. But the work is nothing. I mean, have nothing to do with his glory. Have nothing to do with the gospel. Spiritual well-being. That's why this is not about the uh, uh, judgment of the hellfire, but the judgment uh, of the Christ regarding reward. Are you with me? So, let's see some more. Verse 13. Each one's work will become clear. Yeah, do you see this is regarding work? About what? Work. Is it? Regarding faith or work? Work. Okay. Work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. Yes, which means this fire is a testing. With which intention did they do? Is it pure intention or, or for getting his own glory? This fire will be testing for reward. You see? And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Yes, this fire is for the testing work. Are you with me? This is not a fire, okay? And the uh, 13, uh, sorry, 14 and 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 14, 15. Let's read together. If anyone's work which he has uh, built on it endures, he will receive reward. Yes, this is about what? Salvation or reward? Reward, yeah. This work remains. Why? He did with a pure intention, pure heart for the Lord. Whatever you did, even the giving the uh, a cup of cold water in the name of the disciple, in the name of the Lord, never be forgotten to be rewarded. Are you with me? Yeah, this is about the reward. Verse 15. If anyone's work is a bond, he will suffer loss. Okay, this is what kind of loss? Loss of salvation? No. Loss of the reward. Already I told you. That's why I'm saying to you, according to context, this is not loss of salvation, but loss of reward. There are two kinds of Christian. One Christian on the foundation, two of them they are safe. One Christian he built with the in whatever like uh, uh, the materials which endures forever. He did for the Lord with a pure intention. But the other just he lived for himself. And the whatever reward will be different. It's very clear. And then. This is a result when the branch abide properly in the vine tree. He's able to provide it, uh, provide it with the nutrition for growth and producing much fruit. And their joy will be full and Father will be glorified through their lives and they will be recognized as uh, his disciples. They will be able to take more part in the works of the Holy Spirit being used as the channels of the gospel. Yes, this is result. When they, when the branches abide properly in the vine. Is it clear? Very clear reason, very crystal clear reason we have why born again Christian uh, should abide in the body of Christ. This reason. And also, process of pruning also there. This uh, chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. I'm the true vine, and my father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Okay, here are two kinds of branch. One branch doesn't bear fruit. The other branch bear much fruit. Those branch bear much fruit. He prunes. Why? Why prunes? That it may bear more fruit. We are able to take a part in God's work, work of the Holy Spirit, more and more. What kind of lives do you want to lead? Abundant life or not? Most of you want to make it more abundant, isn't it? No, this is a key to be connected and abide in his body. And he, even he will prune such branches bear fruit so that it may bear more fruit. 
So, conclusion. I am the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me and I in you. It is a commandment of the Lord toward saints since we got saved. Remember the position and the relationship of the saint and the church. Church is like a vine. We are like a branches. And what about church is like a body. We are like a members of it. It's a very clear relationship, isn't it? We should be connected, isn't it? And number uh, three, it is the desire of the Lord for us to bear much fruit after getting the salvation of the soul. Yes, this is mind of the parent. After they eh, gave birth to the baby, parent must want the baby to grow well. Am I right? And uh, becoming a mm, good person, you know, the giving a uh, good impact on others. Am I right? Likewise, our Heavenly Father also, He wants us to grow well. For that, this is essential. How to abide in His body. Church life is essential eh? for the growth and maturity. And uh, uh, producing the fruit, isn't it? And the fullness of love and joy in the Christian life with the church, already I told you, we want experience that the fullness of the love and joy, you should abide in the church because it's possible along with the brethren, isn't it? And then, uh, being connected to the church is necessary for the saint to grow and bear fruit, already I told you. And the saint are protected, protected and able to grow properly in the church with the care of the Lord, already I told you. Because this church is the body of the Lord, that's, that's why Lord still, He cares of it. Do you want to get His care? And be connected to the church and abide in Him, isn't it? The John, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, this is not Hebrew, this is uh, Ephesians, sorry. Ephesians chapter 5, 29 and 30. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but uh, nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church, for we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his, his bones. Yes, see, now church is his body. That's why he cares, nourishes, cherishes it. That's why the, the, please remember, when, when the, we abide in his body, we also we are able to be taken care of, isn't it? By him. See? And then, again, sorry, I'm saying this is not Hebrew, but Ephesians, okay? Ephesians chapter 5, the mistyping. And then first John 2, 27 and 28. Let's read together. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has uh, taught you, you will abide in him. 28. And now, little children, abide in him, that uh, when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. One of the reasons why we have to abide in him, not to be shamed at his coming. We don't know when, uh, exactly when he comes again, but very near, imminent, isn't it? So the, the more we uh, see the days approach, we need to abide in his body more and more, getting his teaching, teaching of the Holy Spirit. And uh, our life will be more abundant with joy and uh, more fruit. This is the reason why we have to abide. I'm the vine, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Actually, uh, this parable, hmm? It's not difficult for us to understand. Even the uh, elementary school students, they could understand. Am I right? But uh, it's uh, very funny that adult people, some of them, <laughs> they may not understand. <laughs> anyway, so it's very clear the, what the Lord uh, wanted to the, teach us with this parable. I'm the vine, you are the branches. Just a few more Bible verses, let's see, and let me... Eh. Uh, finish and uh, uh, after we see a few more Bible verses, Hebrew chapter 10, 25. Let's read together. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Already I told you. Now, the, the more you see the day approaching, his uh, second coming, the more we need to have the assembly, not forsaking, assembling of the saint. Even though now some are very difficult situation, of course we follow that. Uh, what about that? Uh, 
Now it is uh, some guideline of the government. But anyhow, but uh, uh, as much as eh, we, are, we, we are able to do, we need to uh, have the fellows even, you know, assembling, isn't it? So, uh, last one. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1. Let's read together. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. Okay. Uh, we should not be a fool, but a wise man. Am I right? This foolish man, he tried to isolate himself. Why? Because he seeks his own desire. And even he's against all wise judgment. You know, don't think, uh, eh? we better not think we are very wise men. You know, those who regard himself very wise, actually, what our proverb says, eh? <laughs> more things can be expected from hmm? and the fool, eh? isn't it? Those who regard himself wise, he's a foolish man, actually. And all the time, think about uh, that uh, being humble is the key point how to receive his grace, how to be wise, how to get the more wisdom uh, from above. And so we need to make ourselves more humble before God. Don't think like that. Eh? I know very much. Eh? I'm okay. I can do everything by myself. No, no. There is a conceit. Bible said Philippians chapter 2 or so. Don't be conceit. We need to be humble. But we actually, the, even though we are saved, uh, we need to help each other, one another. We, we, need, we need to somehow be dependent on one another. Dependent means like, uh, uh, in, uh, in order to rise a greater walk, uh, walk of the God, I mean the saving more souls, isn't it? You know, to be alone can be very weak. Am I right? What about yeah? to be together? Uh, we can do work more than we expected. Yes, I, there is walking power in us, not in only me, but in us, that is in the church. So, and it, uh, today's topic is the uh, uh, church, main uh, topic church. But subtopic is the branch, uh, sorry, vine, a vine and the branches, uh, based on the John chapter 15. I think it's a very important uh, lesson for our Christian life. And all of you, uh, may the Lord bless all of you by His word. And let us pray. Oh Lord, thank you that uh, you have saved us from the eternal condemnation. It was done by your grace. Just we come to know and believe through your word. Oh Lord, uh, we also once we were lost and uh, against your will and uh, 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 children of wrath by birth. But uh, you had compassion on us. You have saved us. Now we are made your children. Oh Lord, help us to lead a worthy life of gospel as your dear children, glorifying your name through our lives. Today, especially, we learn about the church. Lord, help us to abide in your body and uh, getting more nutrition so that we uh, may produce uh, more fruits. We come to and there is one way to glorify you. Please uh, help us. Uh, help us uh, not, to be, uh, not to have a hot mind. Just make us more humble uh, enough to, to receive your grace more and more. And once more, thanks, Bing, that you have given us such a good opportunity to have this Christian Life Seminar. And I give every glory to your name, that in Jesus', Jesus precious name we pray it. Amen.